Present day. <laughs> Present time. Hi. We've been gone for a minute, but I'm back here now. I was too busy going to school, getting a higher education, as the kids say nowadays, while I was learning how to do cool stuff like this. Holding headphones up to his ears. And this. And this. But now that it is winter break, there'll be some videos coming out. I'm assuming when the semester starts again, it is going to slow down yet again. But for the time being, we've got this to work with. And you may notice we have an epic new set. And not only do we have an epic new set, we also have not just one, but two, three, four, five new cameras. But what can we say? It's a, a new day. It's a new era for names, too. The new year is going to ring in all kinds of new opportunities. And today we're not in the full outfit because currently my house is so cold that the tap is frozen. And so I'm not changing out of clothes into a paper-thin dress shirt. Thank you very much. Now, with the niceties out of the way, 12 for a penny. We're back. Yes, we're back. Back again. Back again. So, long story. Uh, TLDR. Um, hi, I'm Scott. That's Seth. Welcome back to 12 for a penny. Hope you missed us. We're back. It's so much worse than you guys could ever imagine. <laughs> if only you knew how hard it really was. <laughs> <laughs> it truly, truly is. So uh, there's also kind of a lost episode that's floating out around there right now um, that we are trying to get back. So if you tuned in expecting to see something, it's going to be something completely different. So but anyway, welcome back to 12 for a penny. Um, we are going to jump right into this because I have a feeling this one might run long tonight. Uh, the album Seth gave me was Danny Brown's Triple X. Triple X. Before I go into this review, I have a, a brief statement that I want to make. Um, I listened to this record. I listened to it again. I came home and I wrote the review. I did no online anything on it at all. I didn't look at lyrics. I didn't look at anything because I had a lot of thoughts about the album. Did the review, went back, started looking some stuff up. There are at least two reviews that are almost exactly what I'm going to say tonight. Whoa. Okay. I'm a hack, but I'm not a plagiarizing hack. <laughs> so I promise, I swear to St. Lombardi that these thoughts are mine and mine alone. And if you do happen to see another review out there that's similar to it, that was their reviews. This one was mine. I promise you I didn't steal anything from anybody. So it was kind of eerie. Um, there's one on... I don't remember the website. That is a track-by-track track thing, and it's eerie how similar it is. So I just want to get that out there. Normally, I don't care, but there's a couple reviews that are damn near like verbatim what I'm going to say. So I uh, just wanted to get that out there. That this is These are my thoughts and my thoughts alone on this one. So, um, going on to this album. So listening to it, you know, throwing it in, um, the production on it is, is, it's pretty amazing. Uh, it's a, it's a really different sound, um, but it sounds familiar and there's tons of chopped up stuff. I mean, I get that there's, you know, samples that have been used in other songs, anything. And, and that, you know, was common, but it was a, a real kind of like nineties vibe that sounded really cool. It comes out of the gates, triple X boom i mean certified banger can't i mean it's it, it's a certified banger um die like a rock star was really interesting to listen to because of all the shout outs and it's kind of depressing too um that all those people are gone and the a lot of those people were people from my generation um you know plaque blood interesting lines radio song really really funny uh really smart um intentionally ironic i wrote on there and i've got the black and yellow black and emo line really really killer line on a lot of funny stuff i was glad that i went back and read the lyrics to it because there's a lot of there's a lot of interesting stuff that he does have to say on it um skip it around a little bit i will the junior soprano tribute song um <laughs> and just a brief aside on that I read that people were pissed that She-Hulk spoiled the Sopranos for them. Wait, what? Wait, wait, wait. 
Yeah, hilarious bit on She-Hulk. Great show, by the way. And if you're negatively reviewing it because it's a female lead, <laughs> talk to somebody, okay, please? Um, it's a good show. It's really funny. Wait, uh, wait, wait. She-Hulk, spoiler Sopranos? Yeah. I've heard nothing of this. Oh, yeah, there are people that are just up in arms about it. Um, I'm not going to repeat spoil it <laughs> but there's a really funny line that a character says on it and one of the characters is like oh my god you just spoiled that for me and people were actually posting online about how irresponsible it was for she hulk to spoil the sopranos 15 years after the show ended that's pretty if, sick that's if sick you have movie. if you have an issue with that get the hell out of here all right um i don't want to you know spoil something else but the titanic sinks so if you have a problem with that, get over yourselves. Anyway, um, I will say this from six through 12. Um, I was driving actually when I was listening to to those tracks. Um, I would not have listened to the rest of the album at that point in time. Um, I thought it was incredibly repetitive. I thought it was lazy. I thought it was misogynistic. I thought it was violent. Um, and I'll, I'll I'll circle back to that in a moment. Uh, if I didn't have to listen to the album, I would have turned it off at that point in time. Uh, but it was the reason that I hated rap when I was into rap, when I got into just strictly that. Uh, and I, I wasn't clutching pearls. The album's called Triple X for Christ's sakes. I knew what I was kind of getting into to a certain effect. Um, but that was probably uh the one of the one of the larger generational gaps on albums that you have given me uh that you know the first two or three cuts yeah i liked it yeah it was funny yeah there was a lot of good stuff on it um and come just to a point uh the his voice and his style and the rapping and all that um it is it's different but it's it wasn't off-putting um i did enjoy it can kind of get into the I don't know if the concept is all the drug use and that's why the voice is like it is. And that's why the album does what it does. And it's why it's paced what it is. It very well could be. Um, I, I, I kind of doubt that to a bit. The voice thing, I think probably yes, to a degree that that is a character on that. Um, but there was, there was a solid 20, 20 some minutes where it was, this is 20 minutes of my life. I'm never getting back. Um, and that I would never tell any of my friends you should go listen to this record because it was to me it's just trash um then as I'm getting out of the car DNA comes on so I'm like okay a little different a little more serious a little slowed down um nosebleed made me set up and take as I was, I was pulling in the driveway nosebleed actually I, I set up and i sat in the car listening to it um so this is a freaking really good song on that um party all the time comes on really good song telling a real a really good story uh not a good story but but telling a story um the rap style is obviously completely different um i wrote down on my notes like 30 is a really old school song anybody could have that could have been Nas that could have been Jay-Z that could have been Biggie that could have been Pac that could have been anybody um that's a really good rap song so this part of the album to me kicked ass mm -hmm. I really like this I really like this part of the album and again this is the the generational gap on it this sound is like stuff that I'm more familiar with um I didn't know people broke into houses and stole stuff literally out of houses um, the way that they did that. But again, that sounded like something that I might have been listening to in the, in the early 90s. It was that. With it is the perfect example of a generational thing. That's what I think when you guys go to a club. And if I was 21, I would have known every lyric to that song. I would have gone batshit nuts when it came on. If I was at a concert and they were doing it, I'm sure the mosh would the mosh pit would explode on that. Just the way it's timed, the way it's sequenced, the way there's the call outs in it, the way that it's funny. And then I look and it doesn't really have that many streams. It so is. that's a that's a yeah, would it? So that's a song that I like that I think, oh, this is what the kids are 
are out there listening to that's the, the the stereotype i guess i have it but when i hear the song i know if i was your age i would be blasting that song at parties and so that's the that's the style of it so kind of circling back to it and i have a couple questions for you too um the latter the latter part of the album is a really strong record um the the first part of the album the very beginning of it i i enjoyed the beginning of it the middle section like i said is a waste of my life i'll never get that time back i thought it was absolutely trash but it was terrible um and that being said there's a couple of funny lines in it too but it's just i don't need to listen to violence against women and misogynistic shit and you can say it's about the drug culture and i know a lot of people talked about that and that's why the album is what it is and that's why he raps like it is and if that's the case, and if this is a concept album on par with Pet Sounds, I give them all the credit in the world. I thought the album was too long. Uh, I thought there was too many, there was way too many songs. Like I said, you could have gone from I Will to Outer Space. The beat on Outer Space was awesome. I, I that will beat. say that. The, that beats that beats incredible. That's that's a really cool beat. Um I I just don't buy all of it that this is this this massive grand concept album, and that could be me being completely wrong. Um that being said, this is one of those where I think, again, as I said before, this is probably the biggest generational gap of a record that you have given me. Um, before I would have said it was JPEG Mafia, but even people my age can listen to that and hear some stuff that at least it's it's exciting and it does kind of hook you in because you hear so many different samples and so many different things that there's something to listen to, where like quite literally for 20 minutes in this album, I completely turned it out, tuned it out. Um, I am really glad I finished the record though. I'm really glad about that. So that being said, um, so why did you give me this record? I gave you this record because Danny Brown <laughs> in the rappers that are, cause this came out in 2010, I believe, I believe it was 2010 or 2012. It's, it's older than I always think it is. Um, sorry, it was 2011. 11, um, yeah whenever Danny Brown stands out because this was at a time that uh people like I mean Death Grips had just made a record but they weren't making waves like Danny Brown was and it I mean the record came out when he was 30 and I it really was debating, yeah which is also why it's called triple x because it's triple x is you know 30 the Roman wow, that's, really, that's surprising it it is um but I was debating between this and atrocity exhibition because I really do like um, Danny Brown and I was trying to figure out what record would be the most Danny Brown one to give you and I figured it'd be this one because Danny's music uh, this afterwards because his mix hit before this is like fine and there's a mix hit after this that's like okay there's like it's there's a lot of there's some radio tracks in there and one of his best songs Resamples Tribe is on there and so that's a, but it isn't like that deep or that conceptual and I find this record to be very Danny Brownie, where especially now, like with his last project and even Atrocity Exhibition, um, he is constantly toying with this idea. He's always going between these ideas of like the the street life, like the crime, the drugs, and like being mature. And his last record is really about like coming to terms with having to be mature. And in all of his radio appearances and stuff and interviews, he's like talking about, like, I can't make fucking dance music anymore. I'm damn near 40. Like, I can't fuck around like that anymore. I can't be bouncing around <laughs> on stage and shit. And so I, this is maybe my favorite Danny Brown record. Maybe it's not, but, and I am in agreement with you on the middle half. I usually skip Blunt After Blunt. I usually skip uh, Bruiser Brigade in Detroit 187. Um, just because I think those songs can go. But the mid the middle half for me lags too. But that like split, that like split between these songs in the beginning are kind of even though like they're all bangers, and especially in the middle, it gets like very, very drug positive, like gangster music. But then with the hard turn at DNA, I figured you would uh, I knew that you would appreciate the second half more because there's much more storytelling and songwriting uh flexing going on as far mm -hmm. as like a narrative. Um but that's why I gave it to you because in and it mixes a lot of like newer styles of production with some older chopped up stuff. But he mm -hmm. also I find that he rhymes and raps the way that 
I imagine older rappers would with like a lot of setup and punchline bars, not a lot of like fancy mm-hmm. wordplay. He's got some double entendres, especially with the uh, leader mind bent hanging on it every cent and on the start of the next bar. That's one of my fucking favorite Danny Brown moments ever. Um, but yeah, I just think if this is like the, the quintessential Danny Brown record, I would say. And I just wanted to introduce you to Danny Brown because he's a very unique figure in hip hop. The, the other question that I would have for you is because the one review that I read of it, and again, maybe I'm not smart enough to figure it out. So do you believe this is, that this was done as like this giant concept album where it came out, everything was like going a thousand million miles an hour and that's the Adderall and, and the party scene and the drug life. And then there's the 180 immediately that is the come down. Um, I mean, do you think that, that that was the concept for this album? And I'm just, I'm giving it short shrift when it comes to that. No, no, no. I, I definitely I definitely do think it is a concept album in that way. But the the only thing that annoys me is that if this was a double LP, if this was a an LP, it isn't sequenced in a way where you flip it. At the, I think it's at the end of Adderall Admiral, he ends it with just play it back. He just played this back and smoke to it. And so I thought that if this was a double, if the second side of this record was actually like this self-reflective thing about drug culture and he's telling him to just put the record back and smoke to the first half that'd be really fucking funny which it might be i do think that the 180 thing is definitely on purpose and that is probably why i gave it to you because i know you like a good concept album but i do like even that being said i do think that bruiser brigade and blunt after blunt are so repetitive and i just also don't dig them that much that I can appreciate the concept part of it and I can appreciate the sequencing of it, but I also don't want to excuse Bruiser Brigade because even though if you're doing a concept record, that's you can still make a, you don't have to put a song that's that repetitive on there. Even if that's the point, I still don't like, I get the point of funny games, but it's still a fucking miserable movie. I get it, but it's still, yeah, and, the movie's miserable. You know, the, you, cut, you cut four or five tracks, make it a tight, 49 minutes, 50 minutes, and nothing's lost if those songs are gone off the album. That's just, no one's missing any of that if that's gone, if those are gone from the album. Um, but uh, so going back, I guess, to kind of like tie a bow up on it, um, it sound quality wise, production wise, everything like that, it's it's rather, it's rather amazing when it comes to that. Um, and I know I, I, I might be wrong here, but there's, a couple of the more like grime tracks that are on the earlier the albums where it's really fuzzy and really um i think it was probably played backwards and and run through some of that stuff um so there's a few different styles of it uh he is a really good rapper uh there's no question about that i don't find the high pitch voice annoying whatsoever he's funny um when he's not trying to go completely over the top on some of the stuff he is funny and when he's serious he's dead serious um like i said the the, the second half of the album is is actually really really good um so you know i'm glad i'm glad that you gave me the album glad i got to listen to it because it's it's not often that i'm challenged that much by by a record like this where like i like i literally got to a point where i hated it like i I, like i literally hated it and i you know you talk use homework you know homework album um where i would have turned it off if i didn't have to listen to it but then i'm gonna miss the second half of the album so you know i would say if that's if that's what he was going for and that was the concept and all that then chef's kiss man it was (laughs) you know that you pulled it off but um yeah there's a lot of talent there and i know that there was a lot of stuff that that i read about the album later that um you know the backstory it was really cool that it was you know twitter beats and it was a free download for people and that's how they really push it out there and it was like you know is there an album is it a mixtape is it a glorified mixtape you know all that so that's cool i mean you know good good for the guy to hustle it and i saw it did have um you know there, that there was actually a lot of people that really praised it uh, when it came out and there were some people that were kind of and about it but you know I mean it's there's a shitload of streams on it when I looked up the streams on the album so it's obviously obviously left a mark on it so it put um, it on the map yeah so no interesting and that's kind of the I guess kind of the punk type of rap that's out there he's and, he's definitely a punk he's definitely punky in especially in this time he was very punky about doing it because he tells stories about like the um uh, 
party 50 cent he was like trying to get signed the 50 cents fucking like record label and 50 cent was like he, this guy's wearing skinny jeans and has dumb teeth and a weird fucking haircut i don't want this guy like he's like they're all gonna think you're gay i'm not gonna put you on my on my label and he said no one no one listened to his shit before he started rapping like yelping like that but it also that does help accentuate when he's being serious and he's not yeah 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 so my that's my thoughts agree disagree drop a comment tell me how old i am so that's what i felt about this record hello everybody uh this is the mid-roll ad for the video that you're watching right now at this current moment the shirt that's on screen is a shirt that you can buy at the names to merch website which the link is uh it's right here on the screen you're looking at it it's uh red now now it's blue now it's yellow holy shit i uh don't know what the link is off the top of my head, so you're looking at it. You're reading it right now. It's also in the description. You can also give us money at uh, patreon.com slash names2. I don't know how to spell Patreon, but that link's on screen now. Oh, it's yellow, too. Whoa, this is getting crazy. You can also watch the rest of our videos on this website. It is uh, names2.com, and it, there's also a new website that people that want to hire me for jobs uh, can go to. It, it's called uh, Seth, Seth, Seth dot com because that, that's my name see that shirt it's still spinning isn't that fucking crazy also if you guys enjoy this you guys will very much enjoy a friend of mine's project that he was working on this year a short film called the haunting of martin hall if you look up haunting of martin hall on youtube you'll find it it's linked in the description and you can spell it right here on screen the haunting of martin hall by my buddy thomas it is a very very funny thing you should check it out it was pretty fun to be on set for that stuff. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I hope you guys enjoy the rest of the video and this shirt that is still spinning. That is absolutely absurd. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, names to forever. Bye. All right, so the album that I gave Seth with much trepidation um, was Tim by The Replacements. Um, I gave this album to him because he knows I'm a huge Replacements fan depending on which day of the week, I might tell you this is my favorite album of all time. Um, side note to the two Matt's fans that might actually ever see this. If you go with Let It Be, I got no argument. None. Personal preference, but no argument if you think Let It Be is better than Tim. Um, if you enjoy this video and you decide to listen to it, um, listen to Let It Be because it's a great freaking record too um but my trepidation is this is an album that i hold in extremely high regard i've seriously at worst it's in my top five albums of all time um and so i just wanted to see what the boy actually thought about it without his dad's shading on it so take it away son um it's probably not my top five of all time <laughs> I'll, <laughs> I'll just say that but i've listened to this record you know often just because I remember you introduced me to it around the time I was watching Lost. So this is probably 2012 was when I got introduced to it. I remember I remember constantly listening to this followed by that Mamas and Papas song from Lost. Um, something that I got from it this time very loudly and clearly that I hadn't gotten before was when I first listened to it uh, younger and wasn't paying that much attention to it is I just kind of thought of it as like a uh, punky kind of rock record. I didn't, what didn't come through that comes through in spades now is their sensitivity. It's not really just like a punk rock heart like that, that is there on some tracks, but it seems much more, um, you know, it's, it's much more, I, I say sincere, like on every fucking record that I get, but it, there's a lot of sincerity on it. And there's a lot of sensitivity and it isn't this like brooding cool guy energy on lyrically on a lot of it. Um, but that came through way more on, on this listen through. And there are some songs on here that aren't skips, but whenever I would listen, would listen to it just regularly, I wouldn't, you it would be highlights for me. Um, those being um, Al Bai and a dose of thunder and lay it down clown. I don't really dig lay down clown too much. I mean, it makes sense ish in the second half of the record. I get it. Um, Those Thunder is fun. Um, it's very glammy, which I'm assuming is on purpose. It's very, it, it gives me big, rem, uh, reminds me of, of glam rocky stuff. And mm. I'll buy is funny. It's very funny. 
and witty. It's very clever. And the vocal performance on it is really good. I do like the way he delivers a lot of those vocals on it. But the highlights on it are where it really shines. Um, it's, it's so funny because on the same record where Bastards of Young is on, there's a song like Kiss Me on the Bus, which is mm-hmm. just, and Left to the Dial, which I'll get in that song later because I think that's my favorite song on the record. Um, it's similar in ways to um, lyric, like th- uh, thematically, in t- big like the Big Star record, which obviously oh, yeah. they were big fans of each other. Yeah. Um, where there's some songs where it's like, yeah, we're having fun, and then the other songs are like these little love songs. And "Kiss Me on the Bus" is one of them where the whole record has like sonically this brooding energy to it. But you listen to a song like that, and it's literally just him crushing, which is pretty hilarious. Swing and Party. Okay, I said the left left of the dial is my favorite song, but I reckon that Swing and Party I think is the best song on the record because hmm. Mr. It's Paul curious. writes his ass off. Um, there's a lot of cheeky turns of phrases on it. Yeah. But to name this song Swing and Party and then to have it be about uh, pretending to be a tough guy when you really have no idea what you're doing, being terrified of your fame, being terrified of being on stage. I saw that and on the on the genius liner notes, they were talking to him and people would ask, like, how would we people ask, how do you have so much confidence to get on stage? He's like, we would get fucking yeah. wasted. We would get wasted and get on stage. That's that's not in. And he knows this. And he's coming to terms with it. And if being afraid is a crime, we hang side by side at the swinging party down the line is a tremendous fucking chorus. And his like breathy, echoey, like defeated delivery of all the lyrics is tremendous. Because it, it like the swinging party is a, a gat the gallows is what it is. And I saw people interpreting it like a suicide. And it's like, no, no, no. They're saying that if capital pun if it was a capital punishment to be afraid they would all be sentenced to death which is incredible and to do it in a in that poetic of a way where it's nuanced and it's not like some of the some like bad rate like a radiohead wannabe band writing something like that it doesn't work but in this it is wonderful it's very it's very poetic and i would I would love to hear a Lord fan's thoughts on this song, not knowing it's a cover. I would, I would, I would love to. So if anyone's watching and you are, you know, a Lord fan and that was your introduction to the song, I would love to, to hear what you thought about uh, what you thought the song was about and what you thought it was. Um, Because, you know, it's funny. This is, you know, again, a crossover moment for you and I. Mm -hmm. um that you know this is again why we do the show you know it's a generational thing but i would just be extremely curious to see how someone who has no idea who paul westerberg is or or what the band was about or anything what their thoughts would be on this song and how how they took it um because one thing about the mats Mm -hmm. that i think um that the fans are is you know they were a band that that the lyrics um connected to to them at that particular age group, which which everyone has that happen to them. That's why you love a certain band. And I'd be really curious to see what a Lord fan, uh, what what they thought about what the song meant to them or how how it related to them. So, uh, yeah, but yeah, a, a, again, an, a, a great pun um, just in the whole song, but a deadly serious song. And yeah, they were, you know, raging drunks that sabotaged themselves every chance they could, um, kind of like this show. And um, that was the, uh, you know, and, and again, it's a, it's a, it's a beautiful song. I think it's fantastic that, you know, that Lord covers it and it gets so, you know, 49 million streams because people want to know what it was about. So good on her. It, it, it is really funny because this, the whole record is screams of like disenchanted generation and the Lord record, a lot of the tonally is similar in the way that it's a lot about being disenchanted with your generation the generations prior to you and so it's weird that tonally it works on both the albums 
And all I could think about was every fucking generation's disenchanted. Every fucking, no one's happy with the time they were born ever. And they all don't like the generation that produced them. And that's just the fucking way it goes. Every which kind of leads directly into the next song on the album. Which is the, which is the highlight. It's the highlight. It's the standout track because it's so big. And, and I, I will say that, um, the only other song prior to this that sounds as big as this is kind of the build up on Kiss Me on the Bus with those drums coming in the second half and the uh, tambourine or fucking sleigh bells, whatever the fuck that instrument is when it kind of picks up. But Bastards of Young is probably the song that I would assume casual fans of the replacements would know because it's the most popular and that's for good reason. It is a, it's the song I've heard the most by them. Although reading the fucking lyrics, I did not know they were saying, wait on the sons of no one. And I swear to Christ, I kept thinking he was saying, Woody Guthrie, save us. We've got no one to name us. <laughs> That's what I thought he was saying. And I was like, okay, I guess they like, I thought they liked pot. I didn't realize that <laughs> it wasn't that at all. So that was a bit of a good reason to return to it. But regardless sorry my screens went off um it's the highlight on the record it's not my favorite song on the record but it is i mean the opening lyric is a heartbreaker it is i mean this could this shouldn't have been the opener but this is like where it all kind of comes together stefan missed the whole first wrong did <laughs> yeah God, what a mess on the ladder of success when you take one step and you miss the whole first rung. First yeah, also, in, just interesting, and again, I, I will shut up so this is the last five hours. Um, Generation X hadn't been termed yet. And this was Generation X kind of like a Rebel Without a Clue hadn't really been termed yet until Tom Petty adapted that. Um, but yeah, now I will say to you, I didn't know for years that it was weight on the sons of no one, which actually is a better line than we are the sons of no one. It's a um, biblical fucking call out. It's a call yeah. the fucking Bible. Yeah, it's a great line. Um, live, they do sing we are the sons of no one sometimes. <laughs> they do. And they also um, sink in um, Norway sometimes instead of no one because there's a huge Norwegian population in, in Minneapolis. Oh, um, so really? they, they do sink that in there sometimes. Um, I thought that it was willingness, willingness to claim us for a long time until I read the lyrics, I don't know, maybe 10 years ago and found it was warrantless to claim us. Um, on that, I didn't know that, so I, I'd sing the song a billion times. I say, on Genius, know. it still says unwillingness to claim us. It's different on different sites. Um, I, actually went to, I actually went to a replacement site. But that being said, is they change their lyrics and songs constantly live. Part of being drunk, part of being bored. Um, and part of, he just like rewrote songs sometimes. Um, but so, yeah, so there's... I, I guarantee it's been sung multiple times, multiple ways. But yeah, that was I didn't I didn't know it either. I sang it wrong for for years. Um, the one the one thing that I'll jump in on this one too, and I don't mean to step on your toes here. Um, the ones who love us best are the ones we'll lay to rest and visit their graves on holidays at best. The ones who love us least are the ones we'll die to please. If it's any consolation, I can't begin to understand them. And that's true. And that's a gut punch. And uh, it's, it's again, it's I, I love Paul Westerberg as the lyricist. I, I, I mean, I, I freaking worship him. I wish I could write. I actually wrote down here. This is I wish I could write this song. This I wish I could write something like this. Um, but this was this was it for me after i got to hear the mats again because i'm i'm not a huge fan of the of the early stuff i'm not i mean i've listened to it a million times it's not my favorite um but this this was this was the introduction of okay this is who these guys are and when i heard this i was playing in a band and this is what i wanted my band to sound like and this is the kind of music i wanted to do and i just wasn't talented enough to do it and that's what hurt the most is I had these thoughts. I just couldn't write them like this. And uh, 
that this is why I love this band. But but again, um, so I'll I'll throw it back to you so we don't go a thousand hours tonight. Um, what are your thoughts on the album? I I do really love it because most of the rock that I'm into that's come out in the past years, like Car Seat Headrest and uh, Radiohead, to a certain extent, as far as like the sensitivity. Honestly, what when I was listening to this, whenever you gave it to me, I was listening to Ed Norton talk about what Brando did for Hollywood as far as what characters people wanted to play. And before Brando, they wanted to play the suave gentleman. But Brando brought this like raw masculinity combined with this um, sensitivity of being in touch with your emotions, being this tortured, sensitive, emotional, but also masculine guy, because that is most of the people that, I mean, that is what guys role models are now. It isn't like this suave gentleman of a thought, like, you know, it isn't the leave story to amen. It's you want to be the best you can be. And that requires you to be in touch with the emotions and be in touch with the sensitivity that the human experience has to offer. And so it's, again, it's, I've just listened to the music that came after this. So it doesn't, it isn't like a revelation moment listening to this, but it is very clear to see just what this had to do because it's bringing forth the kind of sentiment that comes through like on some of the, not even the Beatles, but like, I mean, the Strokes just bleeds up because the Strokes are punk, but like they played their first show. So their backs to the audience because they were too embarrassed to be on stage. And Carsey Headdress, he, he doesn't dance on stage. He, he made all his albums in a, in a fucking car because he, he didn't want to go to a studio. I mean, so in that way, I definitely appreciate the record in a very high regard. And I do I do listen to it just because I like the songs on here because there are a lot of terrific songs on here that are very catchy and got good hooks and have got great lyrics. And whenever Paul writes a good line, he really fucking writes a good line. He really crushes yes. it. And so, I mean, I would recommend this album to people that, or into rock if you like the strokes if you like radiohead if you like carsey headdress if you like the arctic monkeys then you'll dig this unless like the later arctic monkey stuff in which case you're not watching this video because you suck but um, (laughs) most i mean yeah no i i I do really really like this record it's terrific well good I'm, i'm glad you enjoyed it um it's uh you know it's just one of those little bands that could and they chose not to. And probably a lot of that was affected by alcoholism and, and being scared and being afraid to fail um, because they tried again it, it, you know, down the road. But God, what a great record. And God, what a great band. Um, alcoholism thing makes sense, man. Fuck it up north. That's, what, that's, that's how it fucking goes, man. So we're going to stay in the 80s on this one. And we are going to dive into, and I would say that this is also appropriate. What's going on in the world and all that? That's a lie. Um, it's just a. Oh no, you're not. You're not. Get, okay, wait. You're, you're not going to give me the record you're giving me. I know you're not. Maybe we're going to go to 1980. No. London Calling by the Clash. Ah. I know you own it because I bought it for you. I do own it. Um, I don't think you've probably listened to it because it's a double album, the whole thing. Uh, but um, and no, I wasn't going to give you God to give the Sex Pistols. No, I'm not that I thought you were going to give me the Queen is Dead. I was like, you know, I like that record. <laughs> you know, because then I'd have to listen to it again. And Christ, I'm not going to do that. Um, but uh, no, this is I, I'm curious to hear what you think about this one. Uh, again, you can listen to it on vinyl. Um, it is a. Uh, it, it is a without question classic album. Um, but I'm curious on your thoughts on it. And uh, I've got some kind of interesting thoughts on it as well. So that's it. London Calling, Clash. Word. I've actually, I actually come slightly more familiar with it because Grace was playing it on her radio show on uh, Truman Media. Look up Truman Media edu network it's on there somewhere it's actually on in an hour i'm going to listen to it um but so i became a little bit more familiar with it, but i still listen to the whole record more than half a time so i'm definitely sure. looking forward to it. i know the class is 
uh, the shit. I know that Mark Ruffalo's character when he told Sunshine of the Spotless Mind is a big Clash fan, so maybe I can be a cool Clash fan like Mark Ruffalo too. Um, the Hulk's never wrong. The Hulk is never wrong, dude. So, keeping in with, funny enough, um, I was an idiot earlier. I realized that I looked up on Google Triple X to find the album on Wikipedia. I forgot that Triple X also means porn. So now that is <laughs> on there. Good excuse. <laughs> made, a, made a grave mistake there. So, funny enough, these actually, these two records came out in the same year. Um, I almost, you're gonna, okay, the week after next, you're getting fucking death grips. I'm tired. So, so that way, so that way you can understand. You can be like, oh, I get it. I get it now. The only question is me which one, but we're going to give you a record that is a very, the tides are turning. Summer's over. It's autumn time now. It's time to get chicken broth. It's time to have fucking apple cides instead of beers. So you're going to get um, a record that is very important to my development as a young lad. And uh, I'll tell a story about it when we get there, but it's going to be Helplessness Blues from 2011 by the Fleet Foxes, which when okay. it's like Fleet Foxes, you'll dig their replacements. I was like, motherfucker, how did you know what I was about to give you? But the replacements is, not the replacements, sorry. The Fleet Foxes are so comfy. And that's all I'll say. I think I'll dig it. I think I'll dig it hardcore. Okay. I'm uh, looking forward to it. Oh. We will... Uh... We'll check it out, and hopefully we will uh, not have such a long gap <laughs> between this video and the last God. video. Only if I knew how long the gap was between the video that we lost and the video before that one, because this has only been like a month or two. Then it was like three months, and then we lost this one. So it's actually been forever since we uploaded a new video that was recorded. I've been in this new place for fucking three months almost, and this is the first time you're seeing it. So. If you guys know any uh, people that can do tech recovery for free, uh, let me know because I need them badly. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, me. and I said on the last video, um, the lost video, uh, that on the GNR uh, GNR video, someone said that uh, you know we liked I liked the video, but I wish you guys would talk more about mm -hmm. the album. And um, you know what I said was these have a tendency to go really long and Seth honest to God does everything on this. I, I do nothing except spout whatever I think about stuff. And he does all the production. He does all the editing. He does all the artwork. He does everything on that. Um, and we try to keep the videos as short as possible because we would like to have people actually watch them uh, and not tune out after five minutes. And so he does a lot of editing. I ramble on a lot. Uh, if you want to hear like the long form version of it, um, it is on Spotify when it gets uploaded and doesn't crash also. <laughs> um, and we do get into the albums in a lot greater depth. I think the Guns N' Roses one is probably the best long form one we've done. Uh, because that was we GNR and Mad Villainy, right? Yeah. Yeah, and, that, that, that was a deep one. We went deep on And that. we discussed the albums. We actually challenged each other on some stuff. Um, so and they're like they're like two plus hours. So I mean it's if you got to drive somewhere and you just want to listen to us ramble on about some stuff, um, check it out on that uh that format because we do get into it a lot deeper. And you know, on the videos, what you'll see is probably like maybe a third of what we talk about. Um, and sometimes we actually say funny stuff too. I know it's hard to believe, but um for everybody that's kind of stuck with us and and you know we are glad to be back i have a video posted uh we will redo the promised uh mia and counting crows one um here shortly we'll get that up uh on that but again we appreciate everybody that watches it thanks for taking some time out to listen to us ramble on about stuff and uh until next time and hell it might be 2023 with the way things are going with us who fucking knows dude the only thing you can guarantee on is we're not gonna stop making these goddamn videos i won't i, I refuse to stop them try me we're we're gonna keep going and the overarching thing is listen to the freaking replacements they are phenomenal good, you will good. love them ish so until then, peace. God save the king. And thank you guys for sticking with us this tumultuous time of no videos, lost videos, and long gaps between new videos. 
Um, we've got big things in the works coming soon. Should be new merchandise coming out in the new year. There should be at least one more episode of the Names 2 podcast coming out in the following week or so before the new year. And then we have a brand new show, not hosted by me, but a dear friend, that'll be premiering live on New Year's. So I hope you guys are excited for that. It's going to be a lot of fun. And hopefully this channel will be populated with more stuff. And now, guys, I'm linking this webpage to my site that I'm going to be sending to employers. So be really nice and everyone talk about how good the videos are and how much you like them. So that way I can get a job and I can get paid and then I can do all sorts of wacky things. That would be pretty cool. I just want to interview Jimmy Fallon. That's it. That's all. I just want to interview Jimmy Fallon. Thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate it a whole bunch and we'll see you soon. Mwah.